Hey everyone. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Vair Computing. And uh, <clears throat> a word of advice when you're getting ready to go to a stage and you're thinking, should I go to the restroom before that or not? The answer is yes. So it's going to be a very, very quick presentation. So I'm building on the most exciting technology that hopefully is going to excite you as well, which is semiconductors. The way we see semiconductors, particularly computer chips, is because they're the only defensible choke point between energy and information. We see a world where you have infinite abundant energy. We're not quite there yet, but we'll be there. And we see a world where, thanks to AI, the cost of generating software and running software is also next to zero. In this future, the only defensibility that we see as a company to really build a sustainable, viable business is actually building computer chips and for our customers running data centers. Sorry. The problem today is that chips have actually two problems, not one. One, they're no power efficient, and the second, they're no energy efficient. These are like two different problems, right? And mostly you might have heard of, of Moore's law, this idea that computers get faster and faster over time, but that's going to end in about four years. In four years, we're not going to be able to make faster computers anymore. Companies like you know, Intel and Nvidia and, and all that, they're working on this, but they don't have a solution, right? Um, again, people are working on quantum computers and uh, uh, analog and optical. There, there are many, many alternative solutions, but they're not quite there yet. So the way we see this problem, everything boils down to heat. Chips are getting too hot, and our ability to remove this heat from a chip is getting worse and worse every year, until we reach a point where we simply, even if we were putting them into liquid nitrogen, simply we couldn't re be able to remove enough heat from the system. And uh, the way this evolved was, you know, you have single core CPUs from Intel. We are an out of, of growth there. We moved on to GPUs. And we think that also from 2040, 2050 and beyond, they're going to be like exciting new architectures. But from 2030 and beyond, there is nothing. Everyone is investing on more energy generation. The problem is converting this energy into information is very, very inefficient. So even if we build infinite nuclear power stations, still at one point is not going to be enough. The solution that you might be surprised, that's what we're selling. It's called reversible computing. And I really encourage everyone to Google this because it's a massive rabbit hole that five years ago I fell into. I fell in love with this and I decided this was going to be my life mission. And luckily, I discovered other people on the planet that had gone to the exact same process, and we co-founded a company together. Reversible computing is the idea that when you perform any kind of computation and you use the energy to perform this compute, instead of like a normal transistor throwing away this charge, you recycle internally. Sounds simple. Obviously, doing this in practice is incredibly complicated, and that's what we're doing. The idea is similar to an internal combustion engine, the piston, right? Where it, it perf there is a combustion, goes down, and then comes back again and reuses the, the energy as work, as opposed to coming to a full stop, which was how um, chips work today. This is what it looks like, sort of, um, and we call our chip a near-zero energy chip. And by near-zero, we mean a chip that uses almost no energy to operate, and more importantly, does not dissipate almost any heat. And so this is the only way that we can go beyond the thermal li limits that are threatening the end of Moore's law and build something that is both power efficient and energy efficient. And more importantly, we can get to market in way faster than everyone else. 
um, where the technology that our chip is built on is CMOS, which is basically like every other chip out there. So we don't require anything different from a manufacturing perspective. And the other thing is like, how is it possible that a startup can build a, a new chip? Because of course, they're fairly expensive to finance. Is we're not building a what is called a CPU, a general purpose chip, but we're building something that only does linear algebra, matrix multiplications, which is also complex, but it's not as complex as a CPU. And uh, we're going to ship our test chip in Q1. I think this is probably the first time we talk about this publicly in a public forum. Um, a test chip is something where we can demonstrate our amazing energy efficiency and everything that I, I told you about this point about being energy efficient, power efficient, like we can demonstrate on, on silicon. Um, but of course, it's not the final product. The final product is way more complex. It will take longer, right? But in Q1, we think everything is going to change for the world of semiconductors. And I, I truly hope that you remember this moment where you first heard about reversible computing as the moment where everything will change. And I, mostly because right now you don't believe a single word of what I'm saying. And it's fine, right? I mean, you shouldn't because these are massive claims and, and who am I to, to tell you this, right? But just Google reversible computing and then say, huh, that's interesting, right? And see how, how it happens. And this is the part where it's really outrageous what I'm going to say. We believe that in 15 years, every computer chip is going to be reversible. Now, the question is whether in 15 years we'll still be around and you know, you're going to buy chips from us as opposed to buying chips from our competitors. They would have killed us and copied our technology or bought us for pennies because we're an out of, of money. Right? I'm, I'm OK with, with skepticism on this part. But we, we really believe that every computer chip is going to be built using our architecture. To make things more complicated, we are not a quantum computing company, but quantum computer chips sort of work on this foundational technology as well. It's sort of, they're a distant cousin, so they're already related. And you might not believe me, and again, totally fine, but some of you might be familiar with a physicist called uh, Richard Feynman. Um, he passed away in the mid 80s, but in the early 80s, he talked about reversible computing. And he said that he would rather avoid it, doing it. And it was a terrible idea. But it might be the only way to grow computing at the end of Moore's law. We think that time is now, and we want to build this. Thank you very much. Please do Google reversible computing. And please do spend the next six months obsessing over this technology. And then come to work with me. Thank you.